Hello, it is Anika, and I have been in doing intermittent fasting for approximately a year. At least I should say, consistently doing it. I toyed with it a little bit before, and I just wanted to share with you some of the mistakes that I have made in an, an attempt to help you to not make those same mistakes. So let's jump right into it. The first thing is I didn't do enough research. I saw a few videos and I was like, okay, let me get started. And I feel like I honestly, when I first started, I stopped for a little while because I was actually gaining weight. And I thought, oh, there's just something going on with my hormones and this is not, this is not for me. But after just slowing down and doing the research and understanding what was really going on and the proper way to do intermittent fasting, I started to see immediate results. So that leads into my second point. One of the mistakes that I was making, which kind of was a result of not doing enough research, was that I was consuming way too much fat in the beginning. It's, you know, I was trying to do it in combination with keto. So I, before starting keto, I was doing the paleo diet for years. And I made the transition to keto and intermittent fasting around the same time. And all I heard was, oh, for keto, you just eat a lot of fat and a lot of protein. Didn't really do enough research. And I was consuming so much fat and that was what was causing me to gain weight. And I didn't realize that while I may have entered into a state of ketosis, the fat that my body was burning was the dietary fat and not my own fat. So when I burn my own fat, that's what helps with the weight loss. However, um, because I was consuming so much fat, it just was not a good thing. So when I backed up and started doing the research, I became more knowledgeable and figured out what worked for me personally. And it took a lot of trial and error until I got to that place of just understanding. And as I mentioned before, I don't necessarily measure out my fat, but I kind of have an idea now of what works for me. The other mistake that I made, which came from not doing enough research, was that I was snacking in between. So I had specific eating window, but I was constantly snacking. And I realized as I shared in another video that for me, eating was just so much of an emotional thing. It wasn't always that I was hungry. And I often felt like as long as I'm eating, you know, healthy foods, it's fine. But I realized that I was working against myself, even if I was snacking in my eating window. And now for somebody else, it may not bother them. But for me, that really, interrupted or interfered with my ability to lose weight. And I was frustrated because I'm like, you know what, I'm eating what they say you're supposed to eat, but didn't realize that every time that I put something in my mouth, I was creating a spike in my insulin, which causes my body to hold on to the fat. So it was just so counterproductive. So once I got an understanding of what was really going on, I eliminated snacks and started off with just doing three meals, no snacks, two meals, no snacks, and then eventually making the transition to OMAD, one meal a day, and kind of going back and forth between OMAD and two meals a day. The other mistake I made was not paying attention to my eating window. I would eat and then wake up, you know, and just figure, okay, I'll just eat whenever and, and skip this meal and not really counting the hours since my last meal. And after doing some research, I realized that it's not just about skipping meal, but it's about being strategic uh, in terms of when you break your fast, when you stop eating. And, I, you know, I've heard different viewpoints. Some say that you, you get the real benefits after 12 hours of fasting, others say 18 hours. For me, for my body, I have found that if I try to push it to 18 hours, that seems to work really well, which brings me into the next point. So I try to go 18 hours, at least 18 hours. Sometimes I go longer and then I'll eat my meal. That's when I'll break my fast. 
this leads me to my other point. There's so many conflicting information out there and I notice that I would oftentimes ignore what my body was telling me and continue to do certain things that my body clearly was not enjoying because somebody else, some guru or some person that I saw on YouTube said that this worked. So it was, oh, let me just go ahead and consume all of this dairy for the fat. And my body was like, slow down. But in my mind, I was like, well, the, they said that this will work. And then I was ignoring what works for me. So I just encourage you to not make the same mistake and to just really listen to your body. We're all unique. So what may work for one person may not necessarily work for you. And while I can consume dairy, I know that I have to be very careful and make sure that that's not what I'm relying on for my main source of fat and not do it because some great person out there who is very knowledgeable says that this is what you should consume. The next mistake that I made, which I didn't really see the correlation, I try my best to get an adequate amount of sleep each night, an adequate amount of rest, but life happens and there's some days where I'm just not able to get to bed when I would like or I get up earlier than I would like. And I didn't really realize that a lack of sleep really can mess with your ability to be successful on intermittent fasting. I totally did not make the correlation. As a matter of fact, as I started delving into the different research, they say that there is actually an, a hormone that is triggered in greater amount when you don't get enough rest. And that hormone tells your brain that you should eat and it gets released in greater amount when you don't have enough rest. And then there is another hormone that is released to let you know that it's time to stop eating and it sends a message to your brain that you're full. Well, when you don't get enough rest, that hormone slows down, right? So I didn't understand that. And sometimes I would just wake up and just be so confused, like, oh my goodness, I totally killed the game yesterday with intermittent fasting. Why am I so hungry um, so soon when I have a few hours to go until I can actually break my fast? But when I got a greater understanding that the lack of sleep can impact my ability to be successful with intermittent fasting, that was even a greater push for me to turn off the distractions and get in bed when I should. All right, so the other mistake that I made was I was just doing too much. Like, I got excited about trying something new, and as opposed to keeping it simple, I would try to make like all these complicated dishes that I saw that created a whole bunch of prep work, and that became frustrated after frustrating after a while, and it's like, you know, again, making the transition from paleo. When I was doing paleo, I tried to make it very simple and suddenly I felt like, oh, because I'm doing something a little bit different, let's just, you know, get extra with it. And that was just, it was too much, just too much. Now it's okay every now and again to do a, a meal that, you know, requi re requires a hundred steps. And I'm being sarcastic, but every day that's just not something that's sustainable so i just try my best now to keep it very simple so i strongly recommend that you not try to get twenty thousand recipes keep it simple some beef some avocado and some veggies you're good you're good you don't have to make it um complicated now again every now and again i'll try to you know spice it up a little bit but it's not an everyday thing where I'm making these elaborate dishes. Another mistake I made was not understanding or doing enough research on what actually breaks a fast. So in the beginning, I thought I was jamming. Like I was consuming fat green tea with all this butter and coconut oil. And I didn't realize that a cons consumption of fat breaks a fast. I know it sounds silly, but again, lack of information. And I would just be like, oh my goodness, I'm able to go until five o'clock without eating. Well, yeah, it's because you sat and you, you know, all day <laughs> was sipping on, you know, fat tea or 
uh, bulletproof coffee. And sometimes I would even mix some collagen in there. And I thought I was doing it. And I was just frustrated. Like, why am I not losing the weight? So this came from a lack of research. Another thing that I did in terms of not understanding what breaks the fast is I was I would sometimes have my apple cider vinegar drink and I'll put stevia in there and I didn't realize now you know different people have different viewpoints on this but I realized for me that it was hindering the weight loss is that when I whenever I would use sweeteners I didn't realize that that for my body caused me to break the fast and would create a spike in insulin. So I strongly recommend that you have, you do the research and get a greater understanding of what breaks a fast. So that is pretty much it. I would love to hear from you. If you are doing intermittent fasting, what are some of the mistakes that you made initially? Um, leave me a comment below. I would love to hear from you. All right, you be blessed.